Do you play the violin by ear, but you want to read music, but you're not exactly sure, you know, where to start or how to go about it? Now, if you've always wanted to read music, or at least just be better at it, um, I have a really simple two-step method that you can use that'll guarantee that you'll start reading music immediately. And you'll only get better and better at it the more that you do it. So, let's get to it. So before I get into the steps of how to read music, I just want to mention two things really fast. Number one, reading music is a skill. And that skill is defined by speed. So in other words, the faster that your brain can look at ink on a piece of paper and translate it into fingerings, well, that's more skill that you have, right? So when you first start reading music, your skill level will be low. You will be slow. But that's okay because the more that you do it, the faster that you'll be and the more skill that you'll have. So number two, there are really two primary ways in which your mind you know, processes music and learns music, okay? So we're going to do the fast method today. And it's really meant for people who, you know, they don't necessarily have really long-term goals. They're not trying to be professional musicians. They're not trying to get, you know, into an advanced, you know, musical university or something like that. You just want to read music right now. So that's the method that I'm going to show you. Okay, so step one, and this is a really important step, you have to learn your open strings, right? So on the violin, we have G, D, A, and E, right? So you want to be able to identify those open strings on a, sheet, a piece of sheet music very, very quickly. So the faster that you can identify these four strings as they're uh, printed on sheet music, the better, okay? So you can do this in about three different ways that are really easy and they, they work really quickly. Okay, so number one, you can just write the open strings on some three by five cards, right? So I just wrote the staff here, right? I'm not the greatest artist in the world, that's for sure. You just write a staff, it's five lines, right? And then you, you just put the note here on the staff. This right here is the open G, for example, right? And then the next one, that's open D, right? <laughs> and then we have open A, and then we have open E, okay? So, you just want to have somebody test you, you know, they can hold them up and, and flip them up really quick, and then you have to just, you know, play it on your violin. You know, just, you know, see how fast you can play it on your violin. Or you can just, you know, stick them on a music stand and then just test yourself. But the trick is, is that, or the goal is, is that you want to see how fast you can identify the open strings when you see it written on a piece of paper. Okay, so the second thing that you can do is just get a piece of music. Now, it doesn't have to be one that you know necessarily. I mean, maybe you, you do know it. It's probably better that way because you can also use it for number three. But anyways, find a piece of music. I recommend getting like a method book, right? Some really easy music, like let's say it's a Suzuki book or Essential Strings or Essential Elements. That's what it's called. Essential Elements or maybe just a book of Christmas songs or something, right? Just some really easy music and just go through now that you know your open strings, right? You already did step number one. Go through and circle them with uh, a pencil, right? Don't use pen, never use pen. <laughs> Go through with a pencil and just circle those open strings. And all you're doing is you're just teaching yourself to be able to identify very quickly, as fast as you can, those open strings. And just do it for a bunch of songs. Okay, and then the third step is you can use the music that you just used to circle the, the open strings. Now play them on your instrument, right? So put that music in front of you where you circled all of those open strings and now play them on your instrument as fast as you can, right? So maybe every time you practice, just put up a new piece and go through and see how fast you can do. You can even time yourself. It doesn't matter, right? It's preferably a piece that you do know because... Um, the next steps where you want to actually teach yourself to read music, you know, it'd be better if it's a you know piece of music that you know. Um, but uh, but like I say, you can just put some easy music in front of you, like uh, Essential Elements or Suzuki or you know a book of Christmas song or duets or it could be popular music, it could be Broadway tunes, whatever, it doesn't matter. But put music in front of you that you've circled all the open strings and then play them on your violin as fast as you can. Okay, so once you're really comfortable with all the open strings, I can put any piece of music in front of you and bam, you, you know what open string that you're seeing. You can play it on your instrument. Now you're ready for step two. 
Now, step two, all you're going to do is you're gonna get some music and you're gonna write the fingerings in so you can play the music and know what finger to put down. But what you're doing, the bigger picture, is that you're teaching your mind to associate with what you're hearing, with what you're seeing. So you write all the fingerings in. Let's say you've got a piece that is one page, right? It's a really simple song in Suzuki or Essential Elements, or it's a Christmas song, right? It's one page, okay? Go through and write every fingering in, let's say for, I don't know, half a page. Let's say it's six lines or four to six lines or something like that. Write all the fingerings in, every one of them. Then go through and play that passage, you know, over and over again. You know, you are not going to get the fingering wrong because you wrote what finger you have to put down. And what you're doing is your mind is, like I said before, it's relating the, not only the fingering, but also the pitch, what that note looks like, what space is it in, what line is it on. Your mind is gonna start associating with what you're hearing, with what you're doing, with what you're seeing. So do that for the first half. Then the second half, you know, now don't write in quite as many fingerings. Maybe you could just write the ones in that are not open strings, right? Uh, because it's a little bit easier because you already know your open strings really well, okay? So all you're going to do is you're just going to repeat this process but every time you play a song, you're just gonna put in fewer and fewer fingerings. So let's say you make it a goal to do, to learn, I don't know, four pieces, let's say for example, right? Let's say four Christmas songs or four pop songs or whatever it is, right? So for the first one, you put in all the fingerings. For the second one, maybe you put in 80% or 75% of the fingerings. For the third one, maybe you only need to put 50% of the fingerings in. Well, after a while, it'll you'll get so you rarely even have to put a fingering in. Maybe there'll be like a big jump from like the bottom of your instrument to like the top, and you might have to write a fingering in because you, you can't quite you know, remember or maybe you make a mistake. You know, I mean, we all do that no matter what our skill level is. Um, but your point, the point is, is that you, you want to practice this method until you get to the point where you're writing fewer and fewer fingerings in. So obviously, the fewer fingerings you're putting in, the higher your skill level, the better you're getting at reading music. So when you're writing in the fingerings, uh, it might be kind of difficult to try to figure out, you know, what string is it on and what finger is it on. Well, there's a couple little shortcuts that I can tell you about. Okay, so the first shortcut is, if you're on the violin and you're in first position, right? You're not shifting to second or third, fourth, fifth, whatever. You're just in first position. Every time you see a note that's on the line, right? Um, Every time that you see a note that is on the line, right? You have lines and you have spaces, right? So every time you see a note that's on the line, you know that it's a first or third finger, right? So obviously, if you see it's on the line, that automatically, through process of elimination, is gonna make it really fast for you to figure out what finger to put down. So line is a one or three. The spaces are open two or four. Remember, any open string can be played with fourth finger, on the violin in first position, right? So it's open two or four. So that's the first thing. Just remember, if it's on a line, it's one or three. If it's on a space, it's open two or four. Okay, the second thing that I'll point out that might make it a little bit easier for you to figure out what string to play on when you're writing your fingerings in is if you know your open strings, just use those as a reference point, right? So for example, the top space on the staff is an E. Okay, well, that means that any note that you find above that E, that top space on the staff, is going to be on the E string. It can't be on any other string, right? And if you see a note that's slightly below that, on the, the, you know, the line above that, or the space below that, or the line above, b below that, it has to be on the A string, right? And as you go down, you get close to what? That's right, that open A string. So if you see that open A string and you see a note that's slightly below that, well, then you know it has to be on the D string. So it's kind of common sense, but you know, I just want to point out that you know, as you're figuring all this stuff out, you're writing your fingerings in, just remember to always refer to those open strings. Those open string reference points will make it really easy for you to figure out what string that you're supposed to be playing on. So guys, I hope this video was helpful and uh, don't forget to put your questions and comments below because hey, that's how I get my ideas for new videos, you know? Don't forget to subscribe because I do a video every week. So hope you guys have an awesome week and don't forget, happy practicing.